Greetings, friend. While solving this puzzle from the Sudoku Grand Prix, I will reveal to you the top three secrets of competitive Sudoku. The last one's the most important and probably the reason you solve these puzzles slower than you want to. Not only that, I'll give you a bonus secret that you can use over and over again. Click below if you want to give it a go with that. It's solving time. I remember what stuck out to me was that there were a lot of sixes in this puzzle. So you have these two sixes here with this six cutting across row three. Only one place left for six up here in block two. And then you can also look and see there's two sixes in row seven and nine with this six. Gives you a only one place for a six in block nine. And you can do another six solve up here in block six because of these two sixes in the six cutting across row five. And then knock that out. Then you can look at the what the, it does for the sevens. You got these two sevens in rows one and three with that six means that has to be a seven. You always kind of look and go, okay, if I put something in there, how does it further restrict the block I'm looking at? And then you shift your focus and look for where an eight can be. You see there's two eights right here in columns one and three. This eight cutting across means there has to be an eight. This brings us up to our first secret, all right? The first secret that you want when solving competitive Sudoku is you want to look for pointing pairs. So you notice how this four cuts down column two and this four cuts across row eight it means there's only two places left for a four and so you can mark those using Snyder notation anytime you have two possibilities for a can it mark them in that block so if you solve one of these you can solve the other one but the other thing it does is it shows us pointing pairs it means that the fours are limited in block seven to two cells but they're both in the same column and since they're both in the same column that means four can't be anywhere else along Column one, right? It can't be in these two cells already because of this four, but it can't be in these two either, which is great because you put a four up here, you wouldn't have any place to put a four in block seven. So you want to use those pointing pairs to your band. And since now fours can't be in those two spots, and with this four, they can't be here. And because of this four, it can't be here. You can solve this cell for a four. So that's the first secret, pointing pairs. So subscribe to Smart Hobbies if you like to solve Sudoku with pointing pairs. All right, let's move back to the eights, right? Because now we have another neat little pointing pair with the eights, because you got this eight cutting across row five. You got this eight coming up here. There's only two possibilities for an eight in block six. So we have another pointing pair it means eights can't be anywhere else along column seven. So they can't be here anymore. And since you have this eight, this eight cutting across row three, this eight cutting up, only one place left for an eight now here in block three so you use that pointing pair that secret twice and you're able to get a couple of solves now let's look where we can put uh, a five since we just saw this for an eight you got these two fives in column seven and nine there's only one place left to put a five up here in block three this is great for us and this leads us up to our second secret all right our second secret is to look for hidden pairs and what's a hidden pair a hidden pairs when there's only two possibilities uh, or when two candidates are only possible in the same two cells of a house. So a house being a row, comma, block. We want to focus here on block two. Now we put this five here. You have this eight here. They can't be in any of these three cells anymore. There's only two remaining cells. So the five and eight have to be somewhere in block two. So we know this is a hidden pair of five and eight. It doesn't matter what other possibilities could be in there because the five and eight are limited to those two cells. This is that second secret. And you can get pretty stuck on a competitive Sudoku like this, I know I do, if I don't find those hidden pairs. So you gotta be really good at finding these hidden pairs and also naked pairs if you wanna make progress in the puzzle once you stop finding the easy cells with cross hatching. If you wanna get better understanding how hidden pairs, naked pairs work, the top seven strategies you need to solve puzzles like this, download my free solving guide. I'll put a link to it in the pinned comment below. Okay, after doing this 5-8 right here, the neat thing is that Hidden pairs and naked pairs they actually act as pointing and claiming pairs. That means five and eight can't be anywhere else in block two, but it can't be anywhere else along row one. And so since fives are in one of those styles, these can't contain a five anymore. And you have this five, so five can't be here. And this five, five can't be here. There's only a place left for a five. So we can use that second secret to help solve a five up here in block one one and then now with the five in column one and column three and this five in row five we can solve for five right here in block four this is great and this is actually going to lead us up to a bonus secret i'm going to give you an extra secret here all right this isn't 
the third one, this is a bonus secret. You'll see this pop up time and time again. You notice how the five nanometer limit of these two cells here in block two. Well, if you come down and you look at these two fives, you'll notice that fives are limited to those two cells in block eight, right? And whenever you have this, this is called, uh, Simon and Anthony, you'll call them a mini X-wing, but basically the fives are now limited to columns five and six in blocks two and eight. And so the fives gotta be here and here, or it's gotta be here and here. And so you know that now five can't be in any of these cells here in block five. So it limits the fives right here. This is a great way to find and solve cells, also to find claiming pairs, because if there's uh, two possibilities here for the five, that'd be a claiming pair. And that means that fives can be anywhere else along here. But since you have a five in row five, there's only one possibility, we can actually just make a solve. And this is an easier way than going down column four and going, okay, well, this can't be a five because of here, and this can't be a five because of here, and this can't be a five because of here, and this can't be a five because of here. See how long that took versus going, oh, they're limiting these two columns, these two columns, there's gotta be a five in one of those cells. And boom, and I, you can solve for that five. Awesome, I wanted to point that out, that many X-Wing, you will see that pop up time again. In fact, it reminds me of another puzzle where I use this type of mini X-Wing to solve it. I'll put a link to the end. You do wanna check that out and you'll get better at solving these types of puzzles. So let's remove the colors and it brings up to our third secret. This is an important one because most of the time you're just focused on pairs and singles. You gotta find this if you want to master these competitive puzzles and it's to look for a naked triple when you can, all right? We notice we just filled out these six cells. We just filled out these six cells right here, which leaves us a one, two, and a four. Well, the one, two, and the four are locked candidates. And what that means is not only do they have to take up these three cells of row three, but also in block two. And this is huge because now we know one, two, and four have to be in here. They can't be anywhere else along the row. And you're gonna be able to make a solve by knowing that information. First of all, you see there's a one and four right here. So we can actually solve this cell for the two and that will give us the one and four. But now we know that this has to be whatever's left over, right? You know, it can't be one, four, or two, it can't be five, six, seven, eight. It's gotta be a three or a nine. Well, we have a three right here. So we know we can actually solve this now for the nine and solve this for a three. We wouldn't notice all that unless we notice there's a naked triple right there. This is huge. These secrets will get you through competitive circle really quick. I got through this puzzle in like between seven, eight minutes. Um, I found it actually a little bit easier than, than puzzle number one, timing wise. But uh, I did end up struggling a little bit later, and I'll reveal those in my future videos. But after putting this three right here, now we can kind of do some more solving, right? We need a two or a nine to finish block three. I got my nine right there. So there's your two, and there's your nine. Let's kind of follow these twos here. Now I want to get back to cross hatching because that's the quickest way to get through puzzles like this. You got these twos in columns three and one. That means this has to be a two. And do we have any other place we can solve for two? And the answer is yes. We got these twos. But this two means this has to be a two. And where can a two be here in block eight? It's gotta be right there. So we knocked out all the twos. Now it's kind of like follow the threes. I got a three right here. I don't have a three yet in block one. So I know this has to be your three and this is gonna be your, yeah. And there's that three in the corner from the Sudoku pad. Awesome. I love watching that confetti. Okay, you got the six here and it means there's one candidate left you kind of look all the way down and go okay i'm just missing a seven so i want to put a seven right there anything else i can do with the threes yep we got these two threes and this three means i can solve for a three here but i can't solve the threes yet uh this seven does present a nice interesting uh thing back to secret number one right seven can't be here because this seven can't be here we have a pointing pair of sevens and you kind of want to minimize to the your your uh your marking so i'm doing this in paper and pencil when i initially solved it and if i'm just putting little snyder marks it's very helpful for me but if you start filling the entire grid it gets messy and you have to erase it too to make the solves and that just slows you up so the snyder marks are very efficient so you put that there that's a pointing pair sevens can't be here because this seven can't be here because this seven can't be here there's only one cell remaining it can be a seven so we can solve that for a seven and then with these two seven we can solve for a seven right here awesome and what it does is now uh, two things. One, a seven can't be here anymore. Can't be here because of that seven. So we can actually solve this cell now for a seven and get rid of that Snyder mark. But the other thing is we created a full house right here. So whenever I see a full house, I do want to solve that. There's a missing just an eight. 
Awesome. And now we're gonna kind of focus and kind of finish off, you know, block nine here. It looks like we need a one, four, and a nine. You're always looking, there's two or three possibilities. I got a four there. I got a nine here. This has to be your one. And now with this one, what can we do? Uh, you can kind of look and go, okay, I got these two fives here. It means this has to be a five, and then we can solve this cell for a nine. And you come back here, you see this four means this only one place left for four and block nine means this has to be a nine. Now with these two nines, you can solve this for a nine, solve this for the one. And with this four, we can displace that Snyder marker, call it, call that a one, call that a four. Nice. And now we have a full house right here. We're only missing a nine. So you want to mark that nine because you know it's a guaranteed solve for us. Putting this one here and this five here means now we can figure out what these cells are up there. All right, because it's five, that has to be your eight, that has to be your five. I love cleaning those marks, just gobbling up that notation. And because it's one, that's a four, and that's a one. And now you see that, you know, it's just easier for you to look at the remaining cells to see what we can solve. All right, let's go over here. What are we missing? It looks like we're missing a six and a nine. I got six right there. So here's your nine, here's your six. And now with these two nines and this nine, we can solve this cell. Or nine and we were missing a three in block or excuse me column five also in block five that works and now you kind of like you know just cut across here what else can we solve it looks like we need a one and seven here i got my one so here's your seven here's your one try to try to solve two or three cells at a time at this point if you want to get faster at the end here all right with these two ones that's going to be a one with these two sevens that's going to be a seven, which allows you to solve this cell for a three. And then I'll gaze down here and go, okay, these have to be threes. Awesome. And then we know we're missing, looks like an eight and a four. I got my eight right here. So here is your eight and your four. We know we're going to displace that this Snyder mark right here. So that has to be your other four, and this has to be your eight. You won't remember the top three competitive Sudoku secrets unless you watch this other video from the Sudoku Grand Prix. Thank you so much for watching.